my guest operates under the same shaft of heavenly light or portal that Jesus walked under. He says it's available to all believers. Now, interested? <laughs> Jeremy Nelson, I want you to explain uh, what is this shaft of light, this portal uh, that Jesus walked under? Um, explain it. Yeah, in Matthew 16, 17 through 19, Peter had just confessed that Jesus was the Messiah. And Jesus tells Peter, he says, upon this confession, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it because I've given you the keys of the kingdom that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so Sid, what that is talking about is through intimacy with God and revelation that comes from him, we have the ability to shut the doors of heaven on darkness and to open up the portals or the gateways for heaven to invade earth. As best you can, tell me what a portal looks like, feels like. Yeah, basically, if you look at, you know, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, it's where Jesus is baptized by John on the river. It's the greatest example because it says that as Jesus came up out of the waters of the Jordan, it says the heavens were opened onto him. And it says that the Spirit of God descended upon him in the form of a dove, rested and remained on his life. It says that God the Father began to speak his approval and his love over Jesus. And it was from that moment on that Jesus was activated. He began to move in miracles. He began to move in signs, wonders. He began to hear the voice of God and have encounters in the supernatural. So when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the heavens will open over your lives and all of those different things will be activated. Now, this portal of light you've seen in meetings. Tell me about the meeting in Peru. Yeah, you know, uh, we were actually doing a large healing campaign with uh, tens of thousands of people. I was ministering on the stage and I got to the very end where we started releasing miracles and all of a sudden a shaft of light, people could see it, it came down, it overshadowed this little boy that was on the right hand side and this little boy was born with cerebral palsy and when that shaft of light hit him, he was instantly healed of all of the effects of cerebral palsy. He was able to walk and talk talk and move normally. His mother, she freaked out because uh, even his features changed in his face and his body. It was a crazy creative miracle. Let's take a look at what this portal looks like. Now, how would you like to walk under an open heaven? If there was only a how-to book <laughs> on how to walk under an open heaven, a portal from heaven. Jeremy, that's your new book. That's right. Tell us about it. Yeah, you know, I believe that it's God's will that everyone would walk under an open heaven. That's why I wrote the book. And you know what? I believe that just like Jesus saw the heavens open over his life and the manifestation of the kingdom was in his life, it'll be in yours too. And you were given supernaturally certain keys. Tell us a few of them, how you even got them. So several years ago, I had an angelic visitation and I was given a set of keys. And as I got those keys, one of them was a key that said Isaiah 22, 22 on it. And as I began to look at that in the word, I discovered that through intimacy with Jesus, we could hear God's voice and we could see uh, the heavens open and the manifestation of his glory come to the earth. And what's interesting is that if you look at Revelation 3, 7, the glorified Jesus has the key of David in his hands. And so if we want to see keys that'll open up and shut, then we need to to go to Jesus and out of that place of intimacy, when he speaks, we'll see the manifestation happen. 
And you, you made the point earlier, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. It's not just you. That's right. It's for you. It's for everyone. Um, you have been in a move of a portal of God, a revival for five years. Years. Yes, sir. But over 150 nations have come out. I mean, people have visited from all over the United States. Every state in America uh, has been represented, and, and we've seen thousands of miracles. We've even seen in our healing campaign since that time, traveling around uh, over a, a half a million decisions for Christ. And every miracle you could think of has, has happened. Uh, it, it's been amazing. You actually, you go even further. He says, every one of us that is a believer in the Messiah has a right to live under an open heaven. That's right. Yeah, you know, John chapter 1, when Jesus encounters Nathanael, it's very interesting. Philip introduces Nathanael to Jesus, and when Jesus sees him, he says, there's an Israelite without guile. And, you know, he says, I saw you when you're under the fig tree to Nathanael. Nathanael says, wow, you really are the Messiah. And Jesus says to Nathanael, you believe I'm the Messiah just because I gave you one word of knowledge? He said, just wait hereafter, you're going to see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Really what I believe he was saying is, you think that's impressive, Nathaniel. Wait till I die on the cross and I raise again from the dead and I make my home in your heart and in believers' hearts and the angels of God ascend and descend upon every person. Jesus himself prayed for people. At your meeting, Jesus prayed at his meeting. You know, I remember being in a meeting and uh, oftentimes I'll move in words of knowledge. I'll get supernatural information for people. And I got a word of knowledge that there was a woman in the meeting that two years ago had been in a car accident and hit her face on the windshield and had brain damage. And as a result, uh, needed a miracle. And so I called it out. A woman came forward. Sure enough, she had been in the car accident two years before. Uh, brain damage, had metal rods in her, uh, her back and her legs. And I went to go lay hands on her. And as soon as I went to go lay hands on her, all of a sudden, in an open vision, I saw Jesus appear right beside her. And he looked at me and he said, this one's mine. And he laid hands on her. And when he laid hands on her, God did a creative miracle in her brain. And even it was in front of 1,500 people. She actually ran for the first time uh, in you know two years, and it, it was impossible for her to do because of the metal rods that were in her body, mm -hmm. but also her motor skill functions. Uh, it, there, there was paralysis. There was things going on because of the crash. But when Jesus laid hands on her, she was instantly healed of all of it. And, and you know, I I read the Bible. You read the Bible. You read the Bible. But many of the things that are happening to you. They're as strong, or as Jesus said, you'll do the same works I've done and even greater, or even greater. I mean, uh, some of the things, but are you just a special person? I know you said this for everyone, but are you just a special person that walks in these ama this amazing open heaven? Is it really for everyone? Well, I believe it's for everybody who's hungry. And if you're willing to push in and you're willing to press into his presence and allow God to form his identity in you, you know, he's called us to be sons and daughters of God. He's called us to be disciples. And as we live that out, then he has no problem with putting his power on your life, putting his glory in your life and allowing you to see the supernatural. In fact, we just saw something really crazy about five months ago. I was driving home from the fire and glory outpouring. And as I was going home, I drove through a normal stoplight and a drunk driver ran the red light going oh. about 50 miles an hour. I actually looked over like this. I could see his headlights coming at my door and I just yelled, Jesus. And when I did, the car went right through my car physically. And I looked in the rearview mirror and it almost hit the guy behind me. But that guy swerved out of the way and I was so shook. And after that, I said, God, what was that? And he said, that was me saving you because you have way too many souls to win and you're calling. And I said, well, where's that at in the Bible? And he said, Jeremy, remember when they took Jesus by the scruff of his neck to throw him off the pinnacle of the cliff? And he said that he just walked right through him. He said, I caused that car to go through you because I still have a calling on your life. And I'm telling you, he said, if you have a calling and you are fulfilling that calling, God will protect the anointing of God on your life at all costs. Did you catch that? 
He did one thing that caused something in the invisible world to be activated to save his life. He only did one thing. Do you know what he did? He cried out the name Jesus. That's right. Now, Jeremy will teach you the major key in his life that released God's presence, and it's available to you. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. I, you know, I've been to many Resurrection Sundays uh, services, uh, but guess what? When Jeremy had a Resurrection Sunday, people that died came back to life. What happened? Yeah, you know, we were doing a Resurrection Sunday service at the Revival, and God had spoke to me right before the service, and He said, I want you the week before to declare that power is going to come to raise the dead, and that even if someone died, bring the dead. And I'll never forget, because I was really excited and I was halfway terrified, because I thought, wow, what if someone brings a dead person? And so, long story short, we get to the service, no one brought anybody that was dead. So then I was disappointed. <laughs> and, uh, and at the very end of the meeting, you know, I, I decided, well, you know what, we're going to pray resurrection over uh, everything we can, finances, people's bodies, whatever. And I said, if you have a need, just write it down on a card and bring it up. And this lady came up with a card and she actually had a letter and she said, I want you to pray for my friend in Egypt. Well, she forgot to tell me an important fact that she had died just that day before. And so I said to her, I said, well, let's pray. I release resurrection power and we command this dead situation to come to life. And what was amazing is that in Egypt, this woman rose from the dead right when we made the decree. Well, you had something else go on. You had a woman from Lithuania that came because she heard about the move of God. What happened with her? That's right. One of the things about revival or even uh, walking and living under an open heaven is that it's tangible. It's impartable. I want to encourage the, the ones that are watching, you can catch the anointing. And so this girl came from Lithuania, stayed in San Diego for about two months, living under that open heaven. And then when she went home to Lithuania, she thought to herself, well, what did I get? You know, did I get the anointing like Jeremy and Miranda have or like what's going on there? And then she woke up and God said, go into the alley. She went into the alley and there was a man that was dead. And she just walked up to him, didn't really know what to do, but just said, in Jesus name, I command you to live in the man raised from the dead. And now, Jeremy has been given certain keys from heaven. And one key most of us know about but we haven't experienced to the degree that it's available. And this is the catalyst for almost everything. Spiritual hunger. Yeah. Comment on that. You know, I was uh, in Seoul, Korea, ministering to around 2,000 hungry Koreans, and God gave me a dream. And in that dream, He told me that hunger is a currency of heaven. And he said to me that when people pray and when they uh, push in, it creates a vacuum for heaven to invade earth. It opens up the heavens. And I'll never forget in the first night of those meetings with those Koreans, there was 2,000 of them. And they, when they introduced me to speak, they, they said, we want to do something real quick before you speak. And every person pointed their hand towards me and they all prayed for 10 minutes. Mm. And all of a sudden the heavens opened said, I'm telling you, 13 deaf ears in a row opened in that meeting. A woman paralyzed on a mat in the back of the meeting that had been paralyzed since a child, all of the bones began to crack. And she jumped up, she ran to the front. And I mean, it was one of the craziest outbreaks of miracles that I've seen uh, to date. And it was all because of that key of hunger. Their hunger opened it up when they began to pray. And so I want to encourage those of you watching, your prayers open the heavens. When you begin to intercede, when you begin to push in, it causes heaven to open even more than 
maybe it was before. So we can increase in open heaven by intercession and prayer and hunger. Another key that Jeremy talks about is the key, think big. Uh, give me an example in Malawi. Yeah, we were in Malawi, Africa uh, about a year ago. And uh, I was ministering in a large healing campaign. We had about 70,000 people that night. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is when you go to Africa, there's a lot of witchcraft. There's witch doctors. There's, uh, you know, sorcery. There's all this different stuff in the dark supernatural. And the Lord spoke to me that night and he said, Jeremy, one of the greatest keys to breaking the powers of darkness and opening the heavens over regions of darkness is the blood of Jesus. And he said this, he said, Jeremy, the blood speaks a better word. And he said, if you're willing to plead the blood of Jesus over this meeting, he said, I will destroy every curse of witchcraft. I will destroy uh, sickness off of people's bodies and then I'll release my fire. And so I did. I stood up and I even told the witch doctors, I said, listen, I want every witch doctor that can hear the sound of my voice. There was actually uh, uh, about 30 or 40 of them in the back with their sticks. And, uh, and I said, I want you to hear this. You know the power of blood sacrifice. But here's the deal. The power is in the purity of the sacrifice. And I said, Jesus Christ is the perfect lamb with the purest sacrifice there is. Therefore, we cancel out your power of the curses you've released through the sacrifices that you've released of animals. And we release miracle power. And I'm telling you, demons came out of people uh, by the masses. And at the end, I said to everybody, I said, who here either saw or physically felt a demonic spirit leave them. And I'm telling you, over 30,000 people waved their hands. And if that's not crazy enough, then the Lord said, now release the fire. And he said, everyone that gets saved gets the baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight. And so we released the baptism of the fire of the Holy Ghost that night. And it was amazing, Sid. Over 30,000 people uh, waved and testifying to receiving a supernatural language right after being delivered of the demonic. You believe everything in the Bible, but this is off the charts. Uh, tell me about that meeting you went to uh, in a stadium where you were so really supernaturally transported. Uh, I was involved in a stadium event on God TV, and uh, they told me, do not be late to the meeting. You know, you're, you have to be there at this time to open the meeting up and, and to, uh, you know, introduce the speakers. And so I went to a, a restaurant. Well, here's the problem, Sid, is that this stadium could hold probably five, 6,000 people, but about 10,000 people showed up. So I found myself on the way back to the stadium behind about two miles of traffic, and it was like 6.54. And so I told my driver, just drive over the median, take the first exit you can. And so he drove over the median, took the first exit he can, and then all of a sudden we were at the back of the stadium. And I thought, wow, we must have found a secret uh, entrance. And I jumped out and uh, threw my jacket on, ran in the door, grabbed the microphone, and it was like uh, go time. You know, seven o'clock, went on stage, uh, opened up the meeting for the worship. And as soon as I got done, I walked to the pastor that, uh, you know, helped organize. And I said, thank God I found the secret entrance in the back. Uh, you know, we got through all the traffic. And he said to me, Are you, there's no secret entrance. He opened the back doors and it was nothing but woods. And so we got supernaturally transported. And what God told me was this. He said, son, he said, I'll move heaven and earth to get you to the right place. There wasn't the right even time. a road there. It was just woods. We, yep. We, we were supernaturally transported right to the meeting. And here's the deal. Jesus wants to activate you in the supernatural. He wants to activate you in the presence. And I want to talk to you about the greatest key. And that's the key of intimacy in his presence. And you know, every single day I pray a prayer. And before I read the word of God, before I spend time with God, it's out of Ephesians chapter one, uh, 17 through 19. And here's what happened is, uh, you know, Paul prayed for the church of Ephesus to receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, the father. And then it says that he prayed that the eyes of their heart would be enlightened, that they would know the hope of Jesus and they would know their inheritance uh, in him. And so every single day when I pray, I pray pray that prayer. Lord, I ask you to open the eyes of my heart that I would see your word the way you see it. I ask you to open the eyes of my spirit that I would see people the way you see things. And when I do that, it, it's opened up the realm of hearing his voice with clarity. 
I want you to pray over everyone for spiritual hunger and for the fire and the glory. Father, I just thank you for those that are watching right now. And Lord, I pray you'd fill uh, their homes uh, with your presence, God. And Lord, we do. We release the fire and the glory of God. We ask, God, that you would activate people to see, to hear, to know you more. That, Father, you'd open the heavens over their lives and over their families. Yeah, Lord, we thank you right now for those that are watching this program. And we ask, God, that you would release the fire and the glory of your presence. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for a tangible anointing that opens the heavens, God, over every single person's lives, that, Lord, people begin to hear from heaven, that people begin to see in the spirit, that, Lord, that anointing of revival that we are carrying at fire and glory would be imparted and activated now. Father, I thank you, Lord, right now, and I pray that you would release an insatiable hunger to your people, God, that, that Lord, they would seek your heart, they would seek your face, and, Lord, I pray right now that you'd release the anointing uh, of fire and glory, that, God, you'd open up the heavens over people's lives. And Lord, right now we release an activation uh, to encounter your love and to walk intimately with you in the spirit in Jesus name. This word portal is really getting around and it's really just an opening in which heaven comes almost in a direct light to earth. And if you can get under that portal, you can be healed. But Jeremy, you're under that portal. For the past five years, uh, you have had people come from all over the world to get under the portal in your church. How many have been there and how many would you say have made professions of faith in the last five years uh, between that and your campaigns in other countries? Yeah, we've seen over a half a million decisions for Christ in the last couple of years. And we've had a, you know, a couple hundred thousand visitors uh, come through San Diego to get under that portal. And I think that it's amazing the miracles that are taking place. But what you're saying is the portable, <laughs> what you're saying is the portal is portable. Yep. In other words, it may be in your church, but it's also in over you. Is this what you're trying to accomplish with your brand new book, to let people know they can walk in that same portal that you walk in? Yeah, you know, I wrote that book because just like it says in Matthew chapter 3, when Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan, the Bible says he came up out of the waters and the heavens opened over his life. And as I began to study that portion of scriptures out, I began to realize there's many benefits to living under an open heaven. And so listen, when he was baptized and he came up out of the water, the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descended upon him in the form of a dove, rested and remained, but also the Father began to speak. And it was really from that point that all the miracles begin to break out, all the signs and wonders. So the uh, healing anointing came on Jesus' life and he was able to cast out demons. And so I really believe that you too can do that, those that are watching, and that God wants to open the heavens over your life and he wants to release resurrection power. And that book is designed to unleash this in your life. It's designed to be a blueprint through the stories and the testimonies and the lessons that I've learned from the Holy Spirit to impart that and activate that in your life. And you know what I, th I find fascinating, though it's a brand new book, uh, you've been teaching this for a number of years now. Uh, tell me some of the feedback you've gotten when you teach how to operate under that open heaven, that portal of coming down of light, glory coming down from heaven. Yeah, you know, it's amazing, actually, because we've been hosting Revival for uh, almost six years now in San Diego. And this material that is in this book is a lot of the stuff that I teach everywhere that I go. And we've actually seen several major spinoffs where other regions got hit with revival. Uh, it happened in London, England. It happened uh, in also Canada. Uh, it happened in Seattle, Washington. And when we went and visited to those places, the heavens opened over them and they went into extended meetings and they went into a time of, of healing and miracles and uh, the, the portal of God, the glory of God opening up over their region. What about individuals? Uh, do you find that people walk out of that when they've been under your teaching, you can walk out of it and start operating in an open heaven in those portals? We've got hundreds of, uh, or hundreds of testimonies of people that have been activated in the supernatural, whether that's seeing in the spirit, 
angelic visitations, uh, the miracle realm, uh, even transportations and translations. I mean, a lot of what is being done at the outpouring is being translated into people's lives, but I believe that it's impartable. Now, I, I just warned Jeremy because uh, he did three exclusive uh, th CD audio teachings called Living Under an Open Heaven, and uh, they were having a party in the recording <laughs> studio. I am paying them money. Now, you make them, let them work when they're there. Don't you let that glory from the open heaven just you know, make them a wreck? Uh, but seriously, explain what you did on these three CDs. So those three CDs, I really just explain what an open heaven is, what a portal is. I explain how to position yourself to actually get under the portal and to sustain that portal in your life. In fact, uh, here's the way it works is repentance opens the heavens, but obedience causes the heavens to stay open. And so I talked about uh, a lifestyle of purity and intimacy and how that will unleash the miracle realm, resurrection power that will unleash the dreams and the visions of God, all of these different things. And so those are benefits of living under an open heaven. Brand new book, Portals of Revelation, releasing the kingdom of God through signs, wonders, and miracles, and his brand new and exclusive three CD audio teaching series, Living Under an Open Heaven. And you pray an impartation prayer uh, in these three CDs. Explain that. Yeah, each uh, CD ends with an impartation of the topic that we're teaching on. And uh, listen, it was so potent that those that were in the other room while filming, you know, Sid was uh, joking around, but uh, listen, they, they were getting hit by the power of God. I was getting hit by the power of God. I felt like the heavens opened right there in the studio as we were teaching. And I believe that impartation is on these CDs and you can get it. This is a must have resource for you to walk under an open heaven. All of heaven is rooting for you to walk under that open heaven.